What's up YouTube? Well guys, I'm over here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we're about to check out one of the biggest, craziest ball python collections in the world. And yes, I said it, in the world, man. And it's none other than my good friend, Justin Kabelka's facility. You guys seen me do other tours at his other facility, at his old home, but now, man, he has evolved to something so crazy and something that I am hoping to, you know, achieve myself in a couple of years, man. But yeah, let's go check out this crazy collection and get some insights on Jessica Belka's new facility. Justin. Yeah. Could you open the door, please? Password. Uh, Batman. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. Password is, Walt Python Market is dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Justin. Here we have it, man, Justin Kabelka. So a lot of people are gonna be asking, you know, they're gonna, I already know what they're gonna be saying, so I'm gonna just ask for them, just to kind of see into the future. <laughs> but, uh, so first of all, um, how big was your old facility, the one that we've done a tour on before? It was about a third of the size of this. It was 36 by 45, um, so it's a big upgrade space we moved here. What's this now right here? This is 60 by 100, so 6,000 square feet. Oh my goodness, that's a lot, man. So dude, man, we, let's get right into it, man, and uh, start giving us a tour. Awesome. All right, so the main thing we did was we spread out everything, made the building a lot more um, enjoyable to, to work and live in, basically, essentially. So we have a kitchen area, we have a place to eat lunch, and for employees and for myself every day, we we're able to kind of dress it up a little bit for um, just make it look good with the logos and throughout. Well, check out the snake. We didn't actually expand the ball python space that much. We just added all the other spaces to the building to really make it more, more livable. And here we have some of our animals that we are project animals that aren't ball pythons. Things that we enjoy just raising up. We have a couple awesome More like pets? Ones. Yeah, pets yeah. basically. I, I might breed them someday, but there's not like a business aspect to these animals for me. Can we see something in there? Animals. Like for sure. Like Come shows? on, let's look it up. So the main two that we really, really proud of are these bowling pythons, which are absolutely phenomenally pretty. They just shine like the like a rainbow, the black on them does. Oh, like all the iridescence in them, right? Just so cool. So this is one of your favorite snakes? For sure, to me this is a dream snake. Ever since uh, I really got into reptiles in general, these are just pretty much the pinnacle as far as rare and unique and beautiful and dramatic. And they're very, very hard to breed so far. People are trying to figure out how to breed them successfully in captivity. So that element of it makes it kind of fun too. Yeah, so that makes it really challenging. You kind of want to be that one that, you know, that's how I felt with viper boas. Well, people used to think that that um, ball pythons and you know, blood pythons were hard to breed too. So it's really about figuring out how to keep the animal in such a way that it feels comfortable and like the techniques. And so I'm, I'm glad to be part, you know, kind of a part of that that's awesome. process of figuring it out. All right, so come on in. This is the... Uh, Snake area, we'll hit the fans. It's quite down here a little bit. The infamous blue wall. You had That's that before right. in your other ones, it's not that big. That was a carryover. <laughs> it was, um, we wanted to bring some element of the old place into the new one so that we'd have some, you know, continuity basically yeah. between the buildings. So. so essentially we have the building kind of split up into different areas here. We have a uh, kind of the adult side and the sub-adults. We had yearlings, and that's what really did. We took the space that we had and opened it way up and made a lot more of the different kind of separate work areas so that we can be working in here. I can work in here, my employees can be here at the same time and not be bumping into each other a lot. It's made the space a lot more enjoyable. I like the fans too, man. Big shout out to big donkey fans, right? Big donkey fans. That's what Justin calls them. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so right here are your yearlings, right? Right here on this side? Right, so this is, well, these are basically this year's holdbacks, essentially from 2020. How much holdbacks do you think you um, you got, you held back this season? Well, 2020. So when it's all said and done, we'll probably essentially fill up both of these. With, so it's works about 150 animals total holdback wow. from one year. So that, if we make 1,500 animals a year, which is approximately correct, We'll keep back basically the top 10 percent nice yeah okay and then so from right here these last are last year's old backs for the most part they moved to the sub little tubs they're moving into the the older you know things and then once they get to breeder size they move over here into the breeders oh my goodness man look at all this it's a lot so of are these all males and females or right so on this outside wall curving around are all the females and then the males are these three inside racks. We've put them central so that basically when we're 
like tonight, Miguel and I will come in here, we'll try to pair everything. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll pair all these males in. And it'll just be a short walk back and forth. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. To get them all back in and pick them all back out. Um, because otherwise it can be a lot of work. How much parents do you think you'll have? I bet we'll put about 50, 50 males oh in tonight. Gosh, yeah. that is crazy. All right, so real quick, I mean, obviously people are going to be wanting to you know, see some snakes. Could you show off a couple of... Uh, you know, uh, snakes, a couple of males right here. Um, a couple of males the ones that you're excited that to be I really pairing. like that, that are really, really beautiful. So, cool. gotta show this one, of course, because it's a, a triple recessive that is Enhancer, which is a Lion of Desert Ghost, Genetic Stripe, and Clown. I love the G Stripe Clown project. It creates a pattern that we just cannot achieve any other way, which to me, that's all what this is all about is finding that that angle that's unique and special that we can grow on. That's a really cool snake. We have, uh, let's see, a, a, a Definitely one that the crowd pleaser always is a really beautiful clown pied. This is orange dream, yellow belly, clown pied. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, belly. I missed on this on five clutches already. They're hard to hit. Yeah. They're I've hard hit to hit every combo. I've hit OD leopard, YB uh, leopard. I mean, everything besides that one, right. man. Well, for me, I hit two females before I ever finally got a male. So we got a male now going into the process. And um, all right, yeah. so we saw some males here. I don't want yeah. to, you know, show too much stuff off because we have a lot more vlogging yeah, to do. But uh, can we show some females over here? Some females that are going to be going pretty soon? Sure. So one project I know you love, Miguel, and I love it too, is the Desert Ghost Pie project. So this girl, she was just ovulating oh last God. night when we were looking at her. That's pastel Desert Ghost Pie. Desert Ghost and pastel go so well together. They really Even in do. a pie, you put it together, it is just so clean and so creamy looking. So I she love is it. now officially gravid to a um, inchy how... yellow belly double hat. So we're and... trying to get some inchy yellow belly pastel. And look how Desert beautiful she is, man. She's already She's a gorgeous. full adult, man. They just that get D better and better. Yeah. The DG effect. All right, let's show off another so... female and let's continue with this awesome facility, man. Oh, let's look at uh. Hey guys, the reason why we're not showing too many. Uh, uh, snakes. I was gonna say frogs. The reason we're not showing off too many snakes right now is because we're gonna do. We're gonna get into that in the next vlog. This is another gravid girl. We're really excited. This is a Mojave GHI clown, and we're really excited about this because if you see them on one of my recent vlogs, we showed off those crazy Wookie clown combos with yep. the Kraken. Exactly the same pairing. Exactly everything. I'd love to hatch another one. I have a little like a sensitive, uh, you know, with that snake right there, man. Cause I've been wanting that old that female of yours for the longest. Yeah, but I see why you wouldn't want to sell her. Yeah, yeah. Critical, <laughs> critical project. Best looking Very snake cool. I've, uh, that, on that combo I've seen before. All right, man. So we have all the breeder males here and all the breeder females here. Um, can we check out your uh, hatchling side? Yeah. So I remember when you did this uh, when you did this change. I always thought that you know, oh man, Jess is gonna get like double the amount of snakes. But in all reality, I mean, your incubator almost looks like the same size and. I mean, you have the same amount of snakes, unless you have a dungeon that we don't know about. Yeah, you, we, we don't show you the, the dungeon full right? snakes. Right? <laughs> so, no, this is the hatchling area, and um, we are sold way down compared to what we've made this year. We've got this many still. A lot of them are sold waiting to ship out in different places all over the world. What's the, green, what's the green sticker for? The yellow stickers? Oh yeah, I'm colorblind. Okay. <laughs> They're not green. You should be pretty ball python. Yeah. Colorblind. The yellow, basically we're tracking meals. So we're tracking meals here. We go through the first five. We'll just do tally marks just so we know they're well started. Yeah. It's, it's a quick way of doing it and on the fly. We have a lot of animals to feed. We try to find fast ways to be able to record that information. Was there a time where you filled all of this up at once? Like just we completely? We never quite. We got all the way to, into here. The thing is, is that what's happening is throughout the hatching season and the, and the selling season is constantly we are hatching dozens of snakes sometimes a day, but we're also selling at a rate that's really high. So it's constantly like a, a meter going up there and then come back. And yeah, like so it's just kind of, you know, like so, cycles out, you know? Exactly. How much uh, babies could you um, stack up in here? I think we have around 600 tubs in oh, this wow. room. If, if, that if, if is they were all full. three and a half times what I could hold. All right, so what's back over here in this? Is this here we keep all the other snakes? Yeah, so in here we have, uh, we have our shipping area. So oh, we, have cool. we have a dedicated shipping room in this place with some of our merch and also um, all the animals we you know, put together, all the tub, you know, all different boxes in here and ship out of this room. It's a little workshop, basically. Basically. This, this room is so gets cool, really man. busy every day. It is so organized as well, man. I love it. Look at all this. Chase rocks in here. Chase does all of our shipping. He does a lot of our... Uh, um, he basically runs the facility and says make sure everything gets done every week with all the animals. Um, making sure that all the different jobs and the animals get to the customer safely. He's fantastic at it. So you have a little tank over there that's kind of standing now. Of course yeah, we're going to have to... we're going to do a vlog about this, but this is 
a quarantine temporary tank from a really awesome little black oh, dragon goodness. we got from Kevin. Look how cool he is. He is so awesome. I mean, he said he's pretty she, friendly. She, oh, she. And she's extremely well socialized. That is so awesome. We'll have to oh, the she is so cool. All right, so then you have all your boxes here. I see you have some posters here and all that. And uh, you sell a lot of these, Max. I see a lot of people tagging you and stuff like that with we their posters. We sell a ton of different merchandise and we just, we love sending it out to people. It's, uh, it's a really awesome part of this. So best way to get a hold of you on that would it be your Instagram, email. Um, yeah, go to my website or email, whatever. We'll send you the link to, uh, to get your own. Awesome, man. All right, let's move forward. All right, so right here is where you have to have all the snakes. I know there's, I know you're holding them. <laughs> Hiding them somewhere. It's a little cold out here for snakes. So this is like our st <laughs> our staging area where we bring in rodent food, reptichip, extra tubs, all the different supplies we need in order to this is cool. mow the property. Yeah. <laughs> so rodent food, reptichip, that is awesome, man. And then with the rodents themselves, we have their own little wing of the building here. Wow. Oh my goodness. Look how clean it is, man. Yeah, we just finished up the day here and uh, cleaned it all up, mopped it up. It was great. So that is, at the end of every day, it looks this clean. It's a lot of work, but you know, you got to maintain with this many animals, maintain it really well. How much rodents are you producing here? I don't know the exact numbers, but we're essentially feeding our collection every week, plus making an average of 500 that we then sell. 500 uh, rats? 500 extra? rats oh, extra per wow. week. Yeah. That is crazy, man. You know, that just helps kind of uh, defray the cost of the food, which is pretty high. Yeah, oh, deck, oh trust yeah. me, I know that, man. That's, how big is this room right here? 40 by 12? Any um, advice you would give someone do it, like well, that's going to start breeding rodents or anything like that? Something simple? You know, just kind of get into it a little bit, but honestly, rodents is extremely um, easy to do as long as you take care of the pressure points. Like concrete floor, good watering system, quality racks, these are from free to breeder. If you can take care of those aspects of it, it's actually really, really, really fantastic as far as money. They're very, very financially. Um, good and also it uh there's so much demand out there crazy yeah. demand but a lot of people do it you know try to do it on a budget and they run into floods and you know employee issues a and flood could be racks. very crucial starting right. a and chew outs yeah. and once it starts to go bad it goes bad fast so yeah you gotta you gotta put the put the effort in on the on that one side this is beautiful man i, I remember seeing your old you know spot it was nice as well but this right here i mean it's a whole nother level and this is like honestly you don't want to expand any more than this correct this is good for me. I, I don't want to be a rodent producer, you know, as my job. This is it's about the collection and about making enough to kind of defray the cost of it. So before yeah. we leave the uh, the rodent room, uh, what's all this right here? So I just want to show you how we clean the place. We have a lot of bedding and everything. Every week we change every tub. So we dump it into a big spreader and then we have, you know, 24 acres or so that we spread it onto and it keeps this great fertilizer for the grass. Oh, that's right. So so man, nothing gets wasted over here. This is so cool, man. This is all you right here, right? Yep. So Justin, before we uh, before we finish off, you know, I didn't want to leave out the uh, incubator over there. Right. Could you give us a little like size-wise compared to your old one to your new one? It's about a foot wider. That's it? That's about it. But no, no significant difference. We've never completely filled it up. We've always had at least one row empty. In fact, even on your best, busiest? Even on the busiest moment, we think we've, we've had a maximum of 100 clutches in there. Really? And uh, right now we actually have some chicken eggs in there. I was, that's what I was going to get out. Like, <laughs> is that something that you're hiding from like everyone here or? It's a secret project. No, it's a, it's a science project with my kids. We're, uh, we're hatching some chicken eggs. And you already uh, hatched them already, right? We hatched two. We have another dozen in there. It's kind of a fun little project. You know, a lot of people might not know, but I used to, you know, hatch these little um, chicken eggs before back in the day. Really cool. How much clutches do you have left? Well, right now we're at 25 and they're all, you know, for, for the start of the 2021 season. So we're already 25 clutches into 2021. That is so Very awesome, man. Very well, man, Justin, we really appreciate this, man. This new facility is just insane, man. I can't believe it. I know a lot of the viewers are going to just be amazed as well. Um, all this information will be on the description down below, man. Thank you as always, Justin. You got it. Peace.